guess. B. 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 D. B. B. C. C. <laughs> 4,500 meters, Lake Vostok. Remember I mentioned where they were the coldest temperature? So if they found this lake where they're currently digging to go in there and trying to find life under the, uh, the, uh, the lake, because they think there's a geothermal here at the bottom kind of changing the temperature slightly of that lake. Um, so uh, about 800 meters of water there. So it's quite, quite, quite big, quite big. So it's awesome. So what do we have to wear? So depending on the weather conditions, so I'll pass the stuff around for you. So let's talk through the science of this now. So we had to wear goggles. Who wants to try it on? Anyone wants to try it on? Go on. So we tried the goggles. The goggles protect you from the ultraviolet radiation, and so does the, go the glasses. And uh, very, very important. The face mask protects you from the wind. The glove system is also very important. We have two glove systems. Uh, one is for has more rock climbing. There's a glove inside that's missing, but you can pass it around. And you can pass this one around as well. Then you can try them on and try to see how it goes on the inside, how it feels. So the mitts are when you're working in the camp and not moving around. And that one is when you actually try to climb the mountains. But it's, uh, there's a glove, that, there's a two glove system, but there's, I don't know if you are left inside or not. Uh, there's a base layer system as well, which I can pass you around for you. If you want to try it on, you're welcome to. This is a Norwegian army vest. And a very good point about the science here, you can see lots of little holes inside. So it allows you to breathe in and out, and it creates a layer of warm air as well. So we're going to talk more about that in a second. It doesn't look like it's very warm, but it's merino wool. It's very, very warm. Uh, <laughs> the windsuit, made of Gore-Tex, although they claim it's very uh, breathable, it's actually not as breathable as you would think. A lot of times the ice is freezing inside, uh, so that wasn't very good. So you can pass. If someone wants to try it on, please be my guest. You can try it on later on and take some pictures if you want. Are this real? This is real. Yeah, that's uh, rabbits. Uh, <laughs> no, yes, rabbit no rabbits were killed in, in the making of this jacket. They just, they just shaved. <laughs> and uh, the down jacket, a lot of important science with the down jacket as well. Because the down jacket, down is the layer of uh, fur, I suppose you could say that, or, or feather that is below the main feathers of penguins and geese and all these birds that need to. Uh, go to the water or travel uh, far distances as well. Uh, and it's only used when you're not moving. Because if this gets wet, the down loses its power of trapping the air inside and keeping you warm. You're more than welcome to try it on as well. And you can feel how fluffy it is. And the same thing, the down, down slippers. Huh? In the tent, down slippers, pretty awesome. And they are very comfy as well. They can take your shoes out there. Oh, all thing, everything has been washed. So you can try them on. And it is great. That's great for staying at home during the winter if you, if you don't want to turn your heating on. Uh, and the mountaineering boots as well, which I pass around. So these are the boots which you go to the Everest. Uh, and you climb Everest. Way. And it's actually a two boot system, but I removed the inner, inner boots. There's a two boots that go to this, but I removed one of them. And you can try these on as well later on if you want to. <laughs> if you can get, get dressed up for, uh, for pictures. And of course, fleece. Fleece is also very important. I have the fleece layer. <laughs> So all this clothing is very important because of the wind chill factor. So a bit more science for us. Puts your body under enormous stress. 
Antarctica has the lowest temperatures on the planet. You can try it on. But something happens down here yeah. that makes the cold much worse. In Antarctica, your body is much, much warmer than the air around you. So conduction transfers heat from your body to the air. Always from hot to cold, yeah. Condun conduction but air always is also cold. a really good insulator. So when you've warmed up a thick... I just pause that. There's actually a physics song I, I, I sing called Hot and Cold, the physics song. You can check it out. About conduction, convection and radiation. In layer of air around your body, you stop losing heat so fast. But when the wind blows, it takes away that warm layer of air and replaces it with more cold air. And you have to warm it up all over again. And when the wind blows constantly, you're constantly warming up more and more cold air. And your body gets very, very cold. This is the wind chill factor. So there you Getting go. The wind chill factor. It's all about the wind blowing and removing that layer of air. That's why you need all these different layers because it traps the air within the layers prevent you from losing the heat. So especially when you when actually doing science in Antarctica when you, you're actually not moving very much. So you need all this gear. And it's very imagine working on these gloves with a spectrometer which is about this big. And you've got to start clicking things with your thumb about this big. So you actually I had to really have to remove gloves and uh, and to actually press buttons and set everything up. So um, a bit crazy. But anyway, had to be done. So, oh, more questions. This guy likes these questions, huh? So, <laughs> how much food does an Antarctic blue whale eat in one day? How how much food does it eat in one day? See? See, nice guess. It's a good number. It's a good number. It's the same amount as we would eat in four years. How awesome is that? So, what did we eat in Antarctica? Well, we had rations which we made up of before we went. And uh, I'll take you inside the tent so you can have a look at it. Uh, this is our little stove. This is the one of the ones that leaked and that was chucked out at me and I was caught on fire. Uh, but they are very, they're actually quite safe. And we had pots, plastic pots, where you put the dried food I passed around. You put it inside, hot water in, stir it, leave it for 10 minutes, it inflates and it becomes, it's quite good actually. You know, astronaut food's quite good. Oh, sorry. So, let me take you in the tent so you can find out what we actually had to uh, eat. That's inside oh, the it's tent. a video. Oh. Yeah. our tent. Anyway, say hello. 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 This hello. is uh, our porch, nice little porch. And uh, here's our stove, which is just finished uh, boiling some water. And Tim had a tea and I had a coffee. Uh, we've just brought all our stuff inside the tent. Tim can show everything in the tent. Hello! Yeah, I just, I don't now, know. what you're going to see over here might look like a mess, but actually it's not. It is a mess. Uh, we've been clearing out the tent bag to make sure that all of our food, we've only got, we've well, probably got about um, three, four days left, so we want to make sure that the that the food that we've got left is good. So the key bits of our food are... Chris Pine. Mmm. Like a brickless. Uh, best bit ever. Item of the day number one. Zuzia! Like a powdery juice. Uh, we also have uh, hot different chocolate. Mm. We have cereal bars. Mm. So, uh, we have dried fruit. Mm. No <laughs> Soups. Mm. And the key bit, chocolate. Oh, we've got of lots chocolate. of chocolate. Lots of chocolate. We chocolate. also have dried food over there. That's that's the dried food. So we've got beef and beef pork casserole. Yeah, we've got salami. We've got cheese. cheese and uh, rather disgustingly, it's all next to the bee bottle. Yes, as you can see, this is uh, currently empty. Oh, there actually there's a little bit in there, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so in Antarctica, imagine it's late night, which is actually day, and you wake up, you want to go to you know the loo. And are you going to get out of the sleeping bag and put all the clothes on? Because you can't just go in your undies outside because mine's 40. You've got to get dressed to go to the toilet. Uh, so no, you have a wee bottle. So you can do that. Boys and girls. For the girls. Yes, there's a piece of equipment called a shiwi. And uh, it's a piece of equipment which has 
It works like a funnel. It's very, very important for people, like women that go and do expeditions or rock climbing, things like that. So you don't have to undress, just like, a, like, the, like men do, standing up. So it's really quite efficient way of doing it. Um, yeah, it's called a shiri. And yes, so there you go. So you have to do number one in the, uh, in the we do with the tent usually. Uh, and uh, so 23 days without a shower, uh, so only like uh, using baby wipes. Um, number one in a bottle, like like we've seen.